Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Launch in the News. Let's get into it. Open source isn't working for AI. That's what this article talks about. Now, this is a pretty bold statement, but if you think about it, it really makes a lot of sense. Let's dive into it and see what this individual is talking about. And basically the idea is that the scale that's necessary to run open source AI platforms like Bloom AI, like the AI platforms that Facebook, Meta, Google, and other large companies have made available to us as open source, it's really, really challenging to replicate. In fact, if you go on to read through this, um, one of the motivations to share the necessity of giving a copy of the source, they argue, is truly gone. Basically, what they're saying is it's not required, uh, especially with large applications, to actually share the source code, but rather just to give access. And because of their scale, the large language models have a significant problem with reproducibility. So specifically, if you go and you take a look at, for example, the Meta AI uh, site, and you dig in and you go to download some of their data sets, just as an example, these data sets are absolutely massive. And you can actually go and register and download these data sets. So you fill in your information, complete the form, um, and then download some of this information. And what you'll find is it it's just too substantial to fit on a typical, even hosting infrastructure that most folks have uh, or set of servers. And so it really is a logistical challenge to replicate these open sourced platforms. Um, so essentially he's saying that, you know, you can go and run this, uh, download the files, but trying to run it on your hardware is also a challenge. So just the hardware configuration is pretty challenging. And if you go look at the frameworks and tools that Facebook is using, you can see they have a lot of different options and configurations. And even if you get all of these libraries and models, frameworks, languages to work, et cetera, then you also have to get the actual hardware that is really highly focused on AI. You have to actually get that to work too. So there really is a big portion of AI that is maybe somewhat hidden underneath the surface with DevOps and being able to leverage hosting, DevOps, and overall a logistical capability with the servers and the infrastructure in order to support AI that's at a scale that's very viable. Now, one of the things that this article goes on to talk about is providing free access to outside researchers so and early adopters so they can ask their own questions and see the wide range of results and essentially that this would be giving public apis not key card access to the server data center etc but some form of public access to apis now if you look at some of these different ai platforms they do exactly that now what's really cool is if you take a look at bloom ai for example you can actually operate that in a essentially a cloned environment of sorts. Um, you can operate it at $40 an hour is one estimate for what it costs to actually run that AI platform and run substantial tests against it. That is really not bad at all considering what you're getting. And that is really what this article is getting at is this idea that basically if we can leverage the idea of giving folks not just access to the code but really the infrastructure or, or even the infrastructure he's saying, um, but really just a set of open APIs that's going to give folks what they need. Personally, I would love to have access to the actual infrastructure and the code as well. Um, but I think that it's really unrealistic, but it doesn't mean that that's not the desire still. I think having control and also being able to understand how every piece works is really important. And it, it's basically a problem of making it simpler to set these up and run. If you think about computers, whenever they first came out though, we had a similar problem in that most computers were so massive just to make simple calculations. They literally required some of the largest organizations, most of them government supported or research related. 
in order to even run a computer. And of course, nowadays we have the same compute power within a watch, essentially. <laughs> so I think that the scale will resolve itself, but it is a really interesting intermediary suggestion to be able to leverage these open APIs. And there really is a massive amount of logistical challenge with getting this to work at scale. I also think if you look at some of the hardware and some of the changes that are happening with the hardware side of things and essentially organizing chips so that the physical hardware itself can adapt to AI type of calculations, this is a huge opportunity as well. Okay, let's take a look at the next article here. So this one is actually going into open source AI kits from Intel. And this is really cool uh, what Intel has done. They have basically introduced through Intel Vision what they're referring to as reference kits that include AI model code, end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline instructions, libraries, and Intel One API components for cross-architecture performance. So they're promoting their platform but they're doing it through this really compelling set of open AI kits. And they have everything in this GitHub repo. If you go take a look, um, this is one example of one of the kits. So you can go to GitHub and download this, uh, which is really cool. And you can go through and see how to set everything up and how to get it working. Um, and they, they literally walk you through environment setup, being able to go through and complete the implementation, um, following these steps, et cetera. So if you're looking for a way to get really hands-on with AI, this is a really cool way to dive in and sort of get yourself going, um, get your hands dirty, if you will. Um, as you read through this, one of the things that's pretty interesting about it is they essentially say that in addition to building these in collaboration with Accenture, they're designed to accelerate the adoption of AI across different industries. And of course, Intel will have the benefit of selling more chips, a win-win situation potentially. Uh, they're open source pre-built AI with meaningful enterprise context for both greenfield AI introduction and strategic changes to existing AI solutions. So some of these examples that they've made available right now, and surely there will be more coming down the line, are predictive anal analytics model uh, trained to help deliver high service reliability. So utilities, asset health, uh, being able to look at the asset age, mechanical properties, geospatial data, inspections, manufacturer, prior repair and maintenance history and outage records. So if you're doing any kind of work in the software field where you're analyzing or looking at maintenance, utility history, these kind of things. This is a really interesting opportunity to take advantage of this. If you're looking to build a niche offering in AI or machine learning, this could be a really nice starting place to give you a model or an example. Um, and you know, if you're doing anything like this, it's really helpful to take this kind of example, implement it, see what you learn, and then upgrade what you're already doing based on comparison with this open source model. Uh, so really, really cool. Uh, this next one is a visual quality control. Um, it is using computer vision and squeeze net classification. The AI visual QC model used hyperparameter tuning and optimization to detect, in this case, pharmaceutical pill defects with 95% accuracy. Now this can really be a massive opportunity for anyone that's in the field of automation, um, manufacturing, quality control, these kind of things that require this capability. There are so many different applications that this could be used for. So once again, the idea would be to, at minimum, go and take a look at it and see how you could upgrade or refactor based on some of the principles they've applied uh, for your own use case. And then we have a customer chatbot as well as intelligent document indexing. So some pretty interesting use cases and pretty interesting outcomes overall. And really in general, they're planning on releasing additional open source reference kits. And again, you can take a look at some of these on the GitHub repo that they've put up. This is actually under one API source, which is a really interesting project in general, if you haven't seen it. Um, 
But anyway, you can go and you can actually download these and take a look at it. Um, and it uses infrastructure that might be pretty familiar to you uh, and has some great instructions. Uh, the last thing I wanted to hit on was the open source uh, meta AI and where you go to take a look at that. So you can go to ai.facebook.com and you can see this meta AI platform. Uh, there's a really fancy landing page and then it goes right into some different articles and resources. At minimum, I would recommend taking a look at this so that you can benefit from what they're doing. Uh, this is definitely something that at least at minimum you can reference as a library or a set of standards that are available that you can model from. But it is pretty interesting what they're doing if you get into the weeds and see how they're using it. Um, and you can go in and take a look at some of the different research papers. So we will feature some of these in the news as they come up and based on interest and how it aligns with this channel. But I at least wanted to point you to it so you can be taking a look and digging in if you're interested in open source AI. All right, that wraps up this edition of AI and machine learning in the news. Thanks for watching this edition of Tech Launch in the News. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe so you can see more in the news resources. We also have complimentary masterclasses and other resources available to you on our website, www.gotechlaunch.com. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear them in the comments section. And until next time, thanks for watching and bye for now.